morning. And welcome back to Bo. This morning, uh, we'll be doing our lesson from, the lesson will be coming from Revelations 19, 1 through 8. And I am Deacon Ruby Coleman, co-teacher. And I'm Sister Tian Ruffin. And we are so happy that you decided to join us again this morning. We're coming to you from Greenville, South Carolina, Long Branch Baptist Church, where our pastor is Pastor Sean Dogan. And we are so happy to have you back with us on Bold this morning, Bread of Life Development. Yes. Uh, and the title of the lesson today is Rejoicing in Heaven. That's enough right there. It is. Just rejoicing in heaven. But right now, we're going to start with a word of prayer before we start, okay? Our gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, God, with a grateful heart, thanking you, O oh God, for who you are, and thanking you, O oh God, for all that you do and all that you're doing. We thank you, O oh God, for this lesson, God, and we pray, O oh God, that it will bless our hearts. We know, O oh God, that you're able and you are willing to do all things, and we just thank you right now for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you are yet to do. So now, Lord, we ask that you be with us as we study your word, and we pray, O oh God, that the words that we speak to your people, God, will be pleasing to your sight and it will be correct. We would not study your word and try to change someone else and change them from what they're thinking, God, but we'll give them the true word, your word, and we thank you right now for it's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 So... As normal, I'm going to read the In Focus story. And I think this, we're gonna have some good conversation about this In Focus story. Odetta fingered the prayer beads wrapped around her wrist as she looked at the charging documents one more time. She had read them numerous times over the past several months. Indeed, she had drafted them, meticulously making certain that each charge was supported by more than enough facts, evidence, and testimony to prove the allegations of a criminal conspiracy. But she remembered something she learned in school about writing, something that had served her well even after she went to college, graduate school, and law school. Explain things well, because the reader can't ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Odetta knew the, def the defendant sitting across the courtroom was responsible for a multitude of bad acts. She knew it was her responsibility as state's attorney representing the people to bring him to account. Slowly, firmly, deliberately, day after day during this trial, she laid out the state's case, making sure all of the jurors could be as certain in their minds as she was in hers that this danger to the community needed to be removed for the safety and betterment of all. And, she thumbed through the, and as she thumbed through the folder and scanned the charging documents one last time, she breathed a quick prayer, as she always did, mm -hmm. for the Lord's justice to be served, quickly and fairly. The prosecution rests, Your Honor. First, let me ask you this question. Can we trust God to mm -hmm. propagate justice in the world? Or is his justice primarily to be served at the end of the days? <laughs> Y'all, so as I read this, and I am confident that there's no one on the face of this earth that has not experienced a wrong, mm. someone wronging them, whether it's a, a criminal, somebody doing something criminally wrong, families wronging you, friends wronging you. Uh, everyone on the face of this earth can say they've experienced being wrong. Amen. <laughs> and what I love about this question is, it asks again, can we trust God to propagate justice in this world today, or is this justice primarily to be served at the end of the days? Now, I know from my own testimony, <laughs> and I, I know Deacon Coleman has a testimony, that God serves justice today, mm -hmm. every day in this world. And I just remembered as I was reading this, <clears throat> this is at work, y'all. So I'm in a meeting with uh, the plant manager and other managers, because I'm a manager, and we were reviewing documents, and we weren't necessarily agreeing with the plant manager. And the plant manager, I had a, a piece of paper in my hand. And the plant manager came up to me, I mean, his nose was almost close to my nose, yelled at me, snatched that paper <laughs> out of my hand, and I was in such shock. 
Like, what is just happening? <laughs> you know, I couldn't move. I didn't know what to do, and I was embarrassed mm -hmm. because I didn't understand why he was doing this. But I was, like I said, I was shocked, and so there was nothing for me to say. I couldn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. I just let everything roll out. But God is so good. I didn't do anything. I didn't report it to the HR department. But you know, those other managers around me mm -hmm. were offended on my behalf. And another manager went to HR. And I didn't even have to go to That's HR, right? right? Mm -hmm. Those managers were so offended by his action, they took action. And you know what I love about God is that oftentimes, he allows us to see his justice working on our behalf. Not all the times, we may hear about it, mm -hmm. but there are times he allows us to see it. I mean, he demonstrates this to us. And that manager, in time, got fired mm -hmm. because of his behavior, not just his behavior to towards you. me, mm -hmm. but this is how he acted routinely. And I got to see God's justice at work. And I didn't have to do anything. Right. I didn't have to raise up. I didn't have to speak negatively back because, you know, ultimately I would have got fired because I would have been insubordinate. But God's justice, he propagates his justice mm -hmm. today, every day in all of our lives. And sometimes we are blessed to see that justice. Right. And sometimes it's hard for us not to react. Yes. Because we think that we have to take care of it right away. Yes. And embarrassment Woo. will make you. That's a motivator. That's right. To make you want to rise exactly. up. Exactly. But if we just sit still. Yes. Stand back. What's about say, let me fight your battle. Yes. And, and in that case. God fought, your fought my battle. And I've seen that same situation where people would embarrass you in public but then want to come and apologize to you in private yes you know and i say well you embarrass me, me in, in public, public. apologize to me yes in public. yes but even if you don't we know that god is still able and he is willing to take care of us and he'll fight our battles yes. every time i and, love it and just as dk coleman said it's hard you know we're human beings we have you know we're driven so often by our emotions and not necessarily by logic uh, and so, but the word is clear mm -hmm. that God will fight your battle. That's you right. don't have to do it. And then I'm going to say this last thing, because don't you know, God can do more than we can ever That's dream right. of. You think you're going to get somebody back, <laughs> but you can't do what God can do. That's I it. mean, God can make some things happen and you just stand back and wonder, oh my God. So just leave it up to God. Be patient. And I know that I, I lack in that area. <laughs> but try to be patient and let God fight your battle and exact his justice. That's right. That's right. Okay. So right now, I think we're doing the background. Yes. Uh, since we're coming from uh, Revelations 19, but I wanted to read Revelations 1, 9 through 11 because it kind of just tells us what Revelations is all about. So I'm going to read uh, verses 9 through 11 in chapter 1. It says, I am John, your brother, and as a follower of Jesus, I am your partner in patiently enduring the suffering that comes to those who belong to his kingdom. Mm. I was put on the island of Patmos because I had proclaimed God's word and the truth that Jesus revealed. On the Lord's day, the Spirit took control of me. Remember that, the Spirit, Spirit took control of me. And I heard a loud voice that sounded like a trumpet speaking behind me. It said, write down what you see and send the book to the churches in seven cities. And those cities were Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So then we find out that Patmos was a small island, mm -hmm. a small Greek island. Um, and it's only mentioned once in scripture. I never realized oh, I that. Didn't know that. I didn't realize okay. that either. Uh, but it's only mentioned once in scripture. And, and that Paul was put on this island, uh, exile where prisoners really, really were. Mm -hmm. So the Roman emperor placed him there. But you know what? Just because he placed him there, God still knew where he was. That's right. <laughs> and God still had a message for us through him. And so we know that because he was speaking the truth about Jesus, it's the only reason he was put there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So sometimes we put in situations where because we don't agree with what you agree or we speak it, what you don't want to hear, mm -hmm. we are sometimes 
uh, exiled or persecuted. Yeah, persecuted or put out of all those little, they don't circle, little circle of anymore. friends. Yes. Yeah. But it all starts back in, in 19, goes back to 18. So in chapter 18, I'm just going to read the background in our book that says, all of Revelation 18 is about the fall and destruction of Babylon. Now, we know Babylon was used, God used Babylon to punish the Israelites. Yes. But in the end, they got punished. Yes. Yes. So when it says that, Throughout, Jesus, John uses Babylon as an emblematic of all evil empires, powers, and people. John's immediate audience in Revelation was the faithful Christ followers of his day, being persecuted and marginalized by the Roman Empire. Here in Revelation 19, John gives us a window into future events in heaven where a great multitude is gathered in worship and praise of God for what he has done for them, and what he has done to those who have done evil. Amen. So that is our background on this chapter. So now we'll start with our scriptures, read yes. our scriptures, and then we'll go forward to our lesson. Okay, so today's scriptures are from Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. And I'm going to be reading from the Good News Translation. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a large crowd of people in heaven, saying, Praise God, salvation, glory, and power belongs to our God. True and just are his judgments. He has condemned the prostitute who was corrupting the earth with her immorality. God has punished her because she killed his servants. Again they shouted, Praise God. The smoke from the flames that consumed the great city goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne. They said, Amen, praise God. Then there came from the throne the sound of a voice saying, Praise our God, all his servants and all people, both great and small, who have reverence for him. Then I heard what sounded like a crowd, like the sounds of a roaring waterfall, like loud peals of thunder. I heard them saying, Praise God, for the Lord our almighty God is king. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us praise his greatness, for the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared for it, prepared herself for it. She has been given clean, shining linen to wear. The linen is the good deeds of God's people. Mm -hmm. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Happy are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And the angel added, These are the true words of God. Amen. So as we go into outline number one, <clears throat> I'm going to read a few lines from outline number one, which is titled The Demise of the Prostitute. Now remember, the prostitute, Babylon, is being emblematic, represented here as the prostitute. Right. So it says here, God's people in heaven praise God and worship him for having brought judgment and destruction on Babylon, the great prostitute. God's justice can be reviewed as a two-sided coin. God's ultimate judgment of his enemies is one side of God's justice. His mercy and grace toward those who follow him is the other. So what I love about these few lines, if we go to chapter 18, I'll tell you how good God is and how much he loves us. <laughs> right. Let me go back to chapter 18, verses 4, 5, and 6. Now, y'all... <laughs> throughout the Bible and now mm -hmm. you know God gives us chance and chance, chance and chance he's such a forgiving God such a merciful God he allows us to come to him ask for forgiveness hopefully turn away from my sin hopefully. and continues to bless us so this is how good God is <laughs> if we go to chapter 18 and we read verses 4 it says then I heard another voice from heaven saying Come out, my people. Mm -hmm. Come out from her. Her is Babylon. Babylon. You must not take part in her sins. You must not share in her punishment. For her sins are piled up as high as heaven. And God remembers her wicked ways. <clears throat> Treat her exactly as she has treated you. Pay her back double mm -hmm. for all she has done. Fill her up with a drink twice as strong as the drink she prepared for you. Now, 
I want to demonstrate here how God is so good. It talks about being two-sided. Mm -hmm. He's going to tear down his enemies, and he's going to lift up and save his people. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all, here we are. We in Babylon. Lord knows what we're doing. Yes. Because we in the city of immorality, right participating. Mm -hmm. But God has given us, he's foretelling a story. He's given us a second chance. He says, get out of there because I'm about to burn them up. I'm about to kill all these people. <laughs> so I'm giving y'all a chance. I, I mean, he's telling us, please leave because I don't want you to participate in their sins. Mm -hmm. and, but I definitely don't want to punish you. So he's given us an opportunity to get out. And then if we quickly go to verse 24, chapter 18, it says, Babylon was punished because the blood of prophets and of God's people was found in the city. Babylon had been killing us, had been treating us wrong. That's they had right. been killing off God's people. And God wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. He says the blood of all those who have been killed on the earth, he was going to avenge. So... If you look at this in depth, again, it talks about God justice. It can be, re be viewed as a two-sided coin. That's right. God's ultimate judgment of his enemy is one side of God's justice. His mercy and grace toward those who follow him is the other. And God warns again and again that all sin must be punished. Yet, God loves all humanity and, de and desires that all would turn to him and be saved. In God good. Yes, he is. Every day he, he gives us. us chance. He warns us. Just as he did at Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. Did he tell Lot, get out of there? Get out of there. <laughs> get out of there. But he does, he will, he will warn us. And we're being warned right now. Yes. But are we listening? listening. Are we listening? That's the key. That is it. Yes. And you know, you can relate this, and we're gonna go on to outline number two, to your your human parents. Mm -hmm. You know, I know most of us have heard this as kids. Baby, don't touch that hot <laughs> stove. Your parent, your mama, especially your mama, she warning you. Baby, you if you touch that fire, it's going to hurt. It's going to burn. It's going to burn you. She warning you. But we what we do, it. we touch it. <laughs> anyway, <And> we get <laughs> it's the same thing. God is, is our parent. He loves us. He wants to do good for us That's and he right. warns us but you know sometimes we don't listen we just, won't listen just the same way here on earth with That's our human it. parents but anyway that was the that outline is about god having two sides and and i want to be on this one this side over here. <laughs> the next outline is about the other side yeah. so this outline is about his grace and his mercy mm. so even though they're still celebrating because he has overthrown Babylon. Now we see the best side of God, which is his grace and his mercy. Yes, yes. So in this outline is talking about the marriage, the wedding ceremony. That's what we've been, we're all waiting for. We know that God said that he will come back for his bride, which is the church. And so the church is his bride, but we know that once we start talking about a wedding, you know, what do we do? If we get getting married, we get ready, we get ready, we try to make sure everything is perfect. Right. But we didn't have to do that because God did that for us. Yes. Jesus did that for us. Yes. He saved us. Our salvation is the way we got we're getting perfect. And we won't be perfect until we're actually with him. Yes. But a wedding, you think about a wedding, there's a, a betrothal part of it, which is the promise agreement. I'm gonna marry you. But while I'm waiting for the marriage, I'm going to be faithful to you, and I'm going to stay faithful to you mm -hmm. and until the day of the ceremony. And in this outline, this is the day of the ceremony. And I just love this last outline where it says, in the bottom part, it said, God shows mercy, not giving us what we rightly deserve. And then he showed grace by giving us what we don't, don't deserve. deserve. Yes. And I just kept reading it over and over in my mind. I said, it's just so true. Yes. He gives us what we don't deserve, even in mercy and in grace. Yes, yes. We feel like we may deserve this, but we don't. And it says that uh, the two-step process for marriage is an important step. You have to wait. So during this waiting period, we are waiting, we're trusting, 
and we're doing the right thing. And we said about the white linen that God would give us our white linen, our white robes. Our white robe, And yes. that is a symbol of our righteous acts. Being cleansed. Being cleansed. Even though we didn't cleanse ourselves, right. he cleansed us right. because of his death yes. and his burial yes. and his resurrection. Absolutely. That's what cleansed us and allowed us to be reconciled back to God. So for that, we have to be thankful. Yes, we yes. cannot be anything but thankful. Yes. So when um, I was looking at it's like it was Ephesians 2 and 8, it said, God saved you by his grace when you believe. And we can't take credit for that. That's right. But, you know, the key is faith, believing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a, a, there's a, a compromise here. You have to have faith. You don't, right. just, you don't get all this grace mm -mm. and all this mercy mm -mm. without having faith. You have to believe, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and believe. That's right. And then this is what you get in return. Yeah, but it's, it's not just... Acting like you believe, but no, no. some time you yes. gotta believe, believe in your all heart the time. all That's the right. time, Absolutely. and you gotta trust, trust that he'll do what he said he would do. Yes. And the promises of God are true; they are true, and we just have to wait sometimes. But and we sometimes we don't want to wait. That's true, but but there's evidence every day all around us, and I know I say this all the time. Every day we wake up that a God allows us That's to right. wake up. That's evidence. That's evidence. Of the blessings, the grace, and the mercy. He gives us a new day. Every day. To rely on him, to put our trust in him. And every day we're asking for something. And every day God is delivering on his promises. So we have the evidence. Every breath you take, take evidence. is evidence. Yes. Every breath you take is evidence. Yes, absolutely. So... This was an outline that I just, I just love it because I just love how gracious he is to us yes. even when we're not. And he will always give us what we need. Not always what we want, but he will always give us what we need. And this is a ceremony that you can imagine. If you just close your eyes and just imagine, you know, you, you, get, you think you're excited when you marry your, your, your future spouse on earth. Just think when you get to see your bride, your bridegroom in heaven. heaven yes. That is a rejoicing time. So I just love this lesson. Yes, this is such a good lesson. Yes. This is such a good lesson. But I want to read the uh, liberating lesson for us. It says, we often struggle with our desire to get even with those who oppress us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it seems that there is no justice for marginalized communities. We must find comfort in the first three verses here, where we learn that God will exact vengeance for us in the end. He will judge all the world's evil people and systems, which is Babylon. Mm -hmm. He will deliver on his promise to effect judgment to those who oppress his, his people. people. So even though we may feel oppressed right now and and seem like everything that we think is right, the world wants to make it wrong. We just have to trust and hold on to God's word. He said that vengeance is mine, yes. and he will take vengeance. Because yes. everything that's happening around us right now, we think the world is out of control. It's not. God is it's still in control. in control of everything that's yes. going on right now. And as Christians, we shouldn't be all excited and upset about things that we see going on around in the world. And we were just talking the other day about how angry people are. Everywhere you look, yes. people are angry, upset about what's going on. We were talking about the gas prices. <laughs> yeah, the gas price is high, but guess what? We still gonna buy it. God gave us the money to buy the gas. Right. <laughs> so it's That's still right. high. So. But you know, I agree with you. As Christians, we should know our faith should take us to a place where we understand that God is in control exactly. and he has a plan. We don't necessarily know the details of the That's plan, right. but we know the outcome of the plan, that we're all going to be victorious. We win. We win. <laughs> we win. So we don't have to be anxious for anything. We just have to be patient and wait on God. That's it. It's all about trust. Yes. That's it. So this has been a really great lesson. So we want to wish you a happy and a safe Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, and we pray that 
the Lord will bless you and if your families, if you're able to get together, we think, hope that you'll have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. So let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for such a wonderful lesson. We thank you, O oh God, that we know, oh God, that you are still in control. No matter what goes on around us, we can still look to you because we know that your word said that you will take care of us. You will never leave us nor forsake yes, us. Yes. And no matter what people may throw it at us, we are still conquerors through you. Yes. So, Lord, we just thank you right thank now you for the many, many blessings that you bestowed upon us and those that we have not yet seen or recognized that we are still being blessed by you. So, Lord, we just thank you for all that you do and all that you're doing. We love you, we give you praise, and we give you honor. It's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. Thank you.